Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. You know what that reminds me of? Having a great day? H have you ever uh, tried tiger meat before? Like, yes, like real tiger meat? If you haven't, you should. They're great! All right, now that the lame joke's out of the way. Uh, so, today I had a request, a request uh, from Uncle Jerry Limerbean. Uh, he requested that I show uh, the supplies that um, I keep for my aquascaping. And I thought it was a good idea to show because I don't spend money, a lot of money on uh, products that companies like Fluval or Seachum uh, sell because most of the stuff that they sell that you would use for aquascaping, you can find find all of that stuff for a much, much cheaper price um, at hardware stores. Um, and I do, I buy a lot of stuff from hardware stores that I use for my aquascaping all the time, except for stuff that I have to have, liquid testers and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm not going to find ammonia nitrate uh, testers at hardware stores. So, yeah, I did have to cough out money for that. But anyway, so I'm going to show the supplies I, I use, um, all the DIY things that I use to uh, build my aquascapes, um, and talk about the price difference and all of that, you know, uh, and, and where I get them. All right, well, here's my box of tools, okay? And I have a lot. So let's try to get through this as quickly as we can. Um, I do have fertilizers of all kinds. I don't need to use those anymore, but I will talk about uh, liquid ferts on a video and what I think are the best if you don't do a dirt substrate, um, what I believe will benefit you. Um, I use uh, canine feces, uh, for that. He had suggested it and I did some testing with Osmocote to see how safe and how dangerous it could be because it is meant for potted plants. Uh, this is just as safe as any type of root tabs as long as you stick it into your dirt. And you can even put it in your water column if you don't have fish, uh, which I did do to my 55. I sprinkled it all the way across. I knew I wasn't going to be putting fish in there for months. Now for hoses, these are my siphons. I do not spend $30 on siphon hoses. You know why? Because I can go to the hardware store and you go in the lumber section and they have rolls of hoses and you buy it by the foot, which it's really cheap. Um, I bought 20, uh, 20 feet of rubber hosing um, from Menards uh, for under five bucks. It's super cheap. You don't, you don't need to buy aquarium siphons. Okay, they'll charge you $20 um, all the way up to the really expensive siphons that there are some that actually cost $100 um, because you can hook them up to your sink faucet and all of that and I don't use tap water so you know my tap water sucks right there uh, other tools that I keep that are handy these are zip ties these are great for attaching um, rhizome plants to rocks or driftwood or I also uh, put sponges on my intakes, on my intake of my HOBs. I'll zip tie those to that. Very cheap, you know, 50 cents for a bag of zip ties, and they're inert. They don't, you know, cause any problems in your tank. Um, okay, and of course I do have, you know, aquarium tools, scissors. You don't have to buy aquarium scissors. They, they don't do anything different than a regular pair of scissors. So you can have that, but they're. These aquarium tools, they come with like tweezers and, you know, substrate scrapers. They're not that expensive. You can get them anywhere I've, from $10 being the cheapest up to $50. I've, I've, I put my hand on a pair of, uh, on a pack of $50 aquarium utensils. I don't know why they're $50 because they look exactly the same. This pack that came with everything, a pair of scissors, Two pairs of tweezers, and this was ten ninety nine on Amazon, and yeah, they have fifty dollar. Why I don't know. Are they made out of platinum gold? They better be for fifty bucks. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Amazon ten ninety nine, no different than buying the fifty dollar stuff. All right, um, and I don't actually use my tweezers for planting. I use my fingers. Um, I know Jerry, you said that you use your fingers for a lot of stuff. 
for me, I found it is a lot easier to get a plant into my substrate by sticking my finger in there and making a little hole and then um, putting the plant in, as opposed to tweezering it in. For some reason, the tweezers just don't work as, as well. I, I don't know. That's just me. Um, I also keep a TDS meter. Uh, these You can buy these for 10 to 14 bucks on Amazon also. What a TDS meter does is it reads your total dissolved solids, and it's uh, really important. In the hobby, um, what these are m mainly used for are in shrimp tanks, but these are extremely important in a planted aquarium, and I'll tell you why. Uh, they're important in a planted aquarium because plants can't photosynthesize in um, water that has a TDS of over uh, uh, 400 parts per million. Um, if your TDS is over 400, they're not going to photosynthesize, which means they're, they're not going to produce as much oxygen. Um, so, yeah, it's great for that. I keep all my tanks, I keep them around 300 or, or uh, lower um, with my dissolved solids, and this helps me regulate. And then when I see that it's above 300, then I'll go in with some testers. You know, yes, I have test strips. These are good if I just need to test like really quickly. I'm in a rush. Or if I've got the time, I use all the liquid testers that you can get by API. And then I see what's getting out of control. I'll see nitrates or ammonia or whatever. But most of all of my tanks at this point are all self sufficient. I don't have to do anything special except top them off with purified water. I don't use my tap water. And if you do have tap water that goes through a softener, that water is not at your, that's not the best quality uh, water for you. Uh, the reason being is that softeners are made out of uh, you know huge chunks of salt rock. Well, what that salt rock does is it extracts all of the uh, heavy minerals out of your uh, tap and replaces it with uh, sodium from salt. And plants do not like salt. Um, they they just don't. Um, if you've ever had problems keeping house plants alive and you water them with your tap and they keep dying, if it's going through a softener, that's why. Um, softeners will keep your TDS um, around two to 500, depending on how much sodium you have in there, and it'll, and that's all salt. It's, it's just too much. I won't even, you don't even wanna drink that water because you're not even quenching your thirst. You're drinking water loaded with salt, which dehydrates you more. So I add all the nutrients to my water. Fishing. Uh, fishing line which is great for uh, different types of plants to tie stuff to if you don't want to see the string um, and then I also use uh, this is called floral wire or garden wire it's meant for uh, plants and you know you can just cut off a piece and then wrap it around a plant twist it up I also use this to all my plant all my lights that I have elevated they're all being held to the ceiling in here with this wire uh, this wire right here, um, it has 50 pounds of, of tests on here. Uh, so that's more than enough to hold these all these LED lights. They, they only weigh a couple pounds max. I also have this handy dandy tool. I used to have a bunch of uh, screwdrivers and hammers and all of that stuff. But last year for Christmas, my son bought me this. It's a hammer. Um, uh, he got it for $20. Um, and it has everything. It has uh, a little wooden saw in here. It also comes with a Phillips, a flathead, and a knife. And as you can see here, a pair of pliers. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I always have several media bags, uh, filter media bags. These only cost 99 cents. And what I put in here are my buffers, which is that beach sand that I, I use. Um, uh, the beach sand that I use is called Ocean Direct, and what I love about it is that not only does it control the KH and the GH and your pH, um, depending on how much you put in here, but it also provides um, all of the uh, micronutrients that plants need, potassium, calcium, magnesium, um, you know, all that stuff. I always keep glue on handy, super glue, this is crazy glue. Um, you can use any type of glue that you want as long as it's in a gel form and you'll know because it'll say gel and the ingredient is called cy Cyrencrolite. So no, you don't need to spend $15 on Seachum Flourish glue. I bought this for 99 cents. Yes, I compare the ingredients of everything that I buy 
to other products and everything that is in Citron Flourish plant glue, it is exactly the same as any gel glue. Crazy glue, gel, 99 cents. This was precision pin glue. This cost me $1.99. And the, this has twice as much glue in it as a $14 little pack of Seachum uh, plant glue. So don't get ripped off by stuff like that. Um, all right. Uh, I, I always have extra uh, media. You know, um, these are media balls, uh, you know, chalk. They help collect um, beneficial bacteria. I forget what kind of knife this is. The reason why I have one, and I bought this for three bucks at a hardware store. I use it for my for all of the wood that I use, um, any driftwood or birch birch wood or what have you, whatever kind of wood I use. Um, I'll use it to uh, shave areas off and uh, or dig into it to make crevices in my wood. So um, the reason I'm doing that is to open up the wood to help it release tannins and also to give crevices for plants to dig their roots in. Uh, this is great. Um, this is a magnetic uh, algae cleaner side, and then it magnetizes, and you just move it around the glass, and it cleans everything off, and you don't have to stick your hands in there, you know, with like a uh, a sponge or something, scraping off all the diatoms or the algae that builds up on the glass. Uh, this is by Top Fin. It was the cheapest I found. Um, uh, I found this at PetSmart for like 10 bucks. You can find them on a Amazon too for around the same price. And yeah, they do, you can even find small ones for nano takes or really large ones for huge tanks. Um, what else do I have in my bag, bag of goodies? More floral wire? Yep. And uh, the food that I use, I use uh, for my fish, I use uh, Fluval Bug Bites. These are great. Um, uh, a lot better in my opinion than uh, the omega uh, flakes which are the most common these are actually dehydrated insects and it has um, fish go nuts over it and also you can buy the color enhancing uh, so if you have any tropical fish that are really colorful the color enhancing fluval bites um, will help your fish keep those bright reds and blues you know out and um, I also feed I don't just feed them that um, I also keep frozen um, blood worms in, in my freezer so you know I'll switch it up one day I'll give them flakes a couple days later I'll give them blood worms so they can you know uh, frozen blood worms I don't buy the live ones your spoons hey this is my this spoon right here does everything that this does I got one fishing tool now all right uh, what else do we got in here? Oh yeah, um, I do recommend getting uh, API test kit. Um, they're, they're the most accurate, um, and, and it'll give you a very precise reading of what your parameters are as far as uh, nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, uh, your carbon hardness, your general hardness, etc. And I also do have testing strips, like I said, of all kinds. This is if I need to test something in a hurry. Oh, and by the way, I found my buffer. Uh, Ocean Direct Sand. I use this in all my, in all my tanks. I use um, uh, reverse osmosis water that I get from my local grocery store. It costs like a quarter a gallon. And once a week I go out and I buy 10 gallons and I just top off all my tanks. Um, I only do a water change if there's ever an ammonia spike, which I haven't had any ammonia problems or nitrate problems in well over six months in any of my tanks. They're all well-established and self-sustaining ecosystems that I'll top off and every other week I'll test just in case, but um, this stuff works perfect. Um, I also, from a hardware store, this is wire mesh. You can buy this stuff for 10 cents a foot. And what this is great for is making mats of uh, moss. And um, yeah, you can make moss mats out of this. And I also keep, where is it? Ah, from Walmart. This is a uh, black tent, you know, window tent for a car. Uh, I keep this, uh, I, I put it on any tanks that are like close to a window that need to be blacked out so sunlight doesn't come in and make the glass start growing crazy amounts of algae because sunlight will make your, your uh, tanks grow ridiculous amounts of algae. But also if I just want to black out the back of a tank to make all of my, you know, tall plants stand out, I'll use this too. Uh, for that and 
when you go to like an aquarium store, your local fish store, they'll sell you, it's made out of the same material, and it's a background, like a sticker that you put on the back of your tank. They'll charge you anywhere from 10 to $30 on it, depending on how long of a roll you need. When you can get 20 feet of this stuff for 10 bucks or less, uh, black and black tent looks great. If you black out the back, um, it makes all of your natural plants stand out, and you don't need a sticker of fake plants because you have real plants in your tank. So, you know, don't waste your money on that stuff. Uh, what else do I have in here? Ah, for my shrimp. I do breed shrimp. Uh, so, for the adult shrimp, I feed them uh, Sira uh, pellets. These are large. They have everything that shrimp need. Yes, shrimp can live for quite some time of just algae in your tank but eventually it won't be good enough. They're gonna need this type of stuff because what this is loaded with is uh, a lot of protein and calcium and calcium is extremely important in shrimp's diet. They'll start having failed molts um, where they can't get their shells off if they don't have enough calcium, so whatever. And then for the baby shrimp, I feed them the fluval bug bites. Sure. Bam! Man, I got so tired of buying um, electronic uh, stick on thermometers for all my tanks every few months because the batteries die. The batteries, and this is a laser one, so uh, ooh, uh, and it tells you the surface temperature of everything. So I just point it directly down into each tank and it tells me the exact temp. This tank is at 73. If you can even read it, no, you can't read it. But anyway, I can just go around and zap every single. The top of the tank, don't shoot it through the glass because it's going to give you the surface temperature of the glass, not of the water. And um, once every couple of days, I'll go through and I'll zap all the top of the tanks and read what it is and on Amazon. Up. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. This video is already way too long. So if you made it to the end, I'm impressed. If not, I'm not surprised. You may not care what I keep for my fish. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you're having a bad day, you're down in the dumps, get up and do something about it. We'll catch you next time. Thanks again, Jerry.